I just tested Anthem Arc Genesis beta room correction. Call me impressed. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Dallasalo with Audioholics. I wanted to continue the series of videos I've been doing when I've tested the Anthem MRX 740 and 1140 AV receivers. As you guys know, the last video I did, I showed you the bench test results on these receivers. And now I wanted to basically see how good the room correction system is. Now I've got experience in the past with Arc Genesis on the STR separates. In fact, I still use the STR separates in my two-channel music room, as you can see here. It's in this rack, and it's powering. Um, it's working with the Revel F328BE speakers. And I use ARC. I limit the correction in this system to about 500 hertz. My whole goal here is to just flatten the bass and raise, elevate the bass response since these speakers are a little bit bass shy, and that helps with that. But... The Arc Genesis that's in the STR is an older version and the, the hardware is older, so it doesn't yet have all the sophisticated features that Arc Genesis is supported on with the new MRX receivers. And I'm not sure that's ever gonna be the case. That's something I'm gonna have to ask Anthem if they ever plan on doing an update on STR. So I wanted to really see what the Arc Genesis is capable of on their latest platform. So what I did was I tested the existing version of Arc Genesis that's in the AVRs right now as of 5-16-2022. And then I went and I downloaded the beta version of the software and I reran Arc and I compared the results. And let me tell you, there's some significant improvements in how Arc Genesis is, is managing your speakers. The two main things that the beta version of Arc Genesis is doing right now that the regular version is not. Number one, it actually calculates the distances and, and phase of the speakers. And number two, and this is really the, the part that stands out among many room correction systems that just don't do this right, is it finds the right phase relationship between the front LCRs and your subwoofers. It uses an all-pass filter to do that. And what an all-pass filter is, is it basically, it will pass all frequencies at the same amplitude, but it'll adjust the phase properly to get the right blend. And that's exactly what the system is doing. And I'm gonna show you the results in a minute, but I wanted to give you a rundown of the system that I'm running in the AudioHawk Smart House. This is the master bedroom. Um, you saw the videos I did in the past where under pre-construction, we put two jail audio, ICS SYS 208 in ceiling subwoofers. What a mouthful of a model number that is. And these things hammer. They have really high excursion eight inch drivers in them. And you can see the way that the decouple from the drywall and the, and the boxes are fully enclosed, really well isolated. It's quite an amazing product. It's one of the best uh, in wall or in ceiling subwoofers I've tested. And I'm gonna do separate videos just on that. And then the rest of the system to round it out, I'm using the Klipsch Heritage Soundbar. It's a passive LCR soundbar. It was custom cut to, to fit the 65 inch Sony TV we have in the room. And as you can see, it blends seamlessly with the TV. My goal in this room in the uh, Audioholic Smart House Master Bedroom was to have good sound without it being an eyesore. You know, just have the blend into the room. And I was glad that I got that 65 inch shoehorn in there because my wife wanted a 40 inch TV. I'm like, no, I don't play that game. Big, Go big or go home. So she likes it now, so that's awesome. And then the AV rack I have here, you can see I've got the MRX 1140 in that rack along with a bunch of other equipment. Um, yeah, I've got a lot of stuff going on in here. The, to just round it out, I've got a 5.2.2 system and I'm using the Klipsch Pro 160 RPCs for the uh, surround speakers as well as the top middles. So it is a full Atmos 5.2.2 system. Yeah, and um, 
because it's Arc Genesis, it has the latest microphone. It has that little dot on the microphone. You're supposed to make that fire towards the front of the room. I want to get into the specifics on what that does with some of the people at Anthem, perhaps in a live stream in the future, because I'm not 100% sure what that little dot is. If you guys know if it is a secondary mic that calculates phase or something like that, give me a comment down below, because I don't fully know right now at this moment, and I don't want to guess about it. But what I do want to show you guys is I want to share um, basically the receiver configuration and then I'll go over the calibration results with you because there's a lot of stuff to go on over here that's very interesting to me. So as you can see here, I'm in the web editor of the Anthem MRX 1140 and it just shows you the different uh, versions of the software that's built into the receiver. And over here, you can see the current version of software that I'm using at the time of doing this video. And this is the beta. I turned the beta on so I can get the beta results. Now, one thing I wanna make sure everybody understands is after you run Arc Genesis, you're gonna go in here and you're gonna see um, your levels and your distances. And it's a little confusing that the distances don't correspond to the actual physical distances of the speakers. And I asked Anthem about that. And they said that it's relative to, it's the phase that's relative to the, uh, the distance between the listening area and the front left speaker relative to the uh, other speakers. So these distances are not exactly, you know, they're not representative of where you're sitting versus each of the speakers. I know this is beta software, so I know that they're going to potentially change this so you can actually see the real distances that are going to each speaker. But just know that it's actually doing a, a, a really good job of getting um, the blend together and getting the delays proper, even though it doesn't show that accurately here yet, because this is beta. And then the subwoofer, this is the really interesting thing, is it shows you the phase frequency and the degrees. Again, this is an all-pass filter, so it passes the amplitude equally at all frequencies, but then it adjusts the phase where it needs to be. And in this case, it did it at 125 degrees around the around that 120 hertz area. And uh, the reason why the crossovers are set so high on this speaker is the Klipsch Heritage soundbar has, I think, four inch drivers. So it doesn't play much below 130 hertz. So it was actually the, it was amazing to me that the Anthem Arc Genesis accurately found the real low frequency response of of the speaker and it set the crossovers accordingly. And it set all the crossovers correctly on all of my speakers. It got the levels really well as well. So that's a good news right there. And now the cool thing is I could show you two things. I could go into the, into the Arc software or I could just show you the PDF. I'm gonna keep this one simple just because um, I'm gonna be doing more videos on this in the future. But here you get a slide presentation after you run ARC and you import it into your system. You run ARC, it gives you a slide presentation as a PDF format of, of the calibration results. And you can see here, it's showing you the before and after where the, um, the red is the measured curve and then the green is the corrected curve. And this there is a room mode in, that, in my room at around 25, 30 hertz. This is a kind of a noisy measurement, I think. These speakers don't have that kind of output. As you can see, they start rolling off right around 100 hertz. And I think Arc Genesis did the right thing by uh, setting the crossover a little bit higher than that, especially because I have two subs that are really close to the uh, passive soundbar. So raising that crossover frequency when you run two subs in a system really does a good job of still blending without being localized. And then you get the more increased dynamic range of having that sub play higher in bandwidth. So you can see the before and after calibrations here, and it shows you all the different speakers. And then it shows you uh, basically the room gain and all the different levels. And here's where you can customize, and I'm gonna get more into this in a, in a separate video, but I tend to turn the room gain up a little bit just to get a little bit of an extra bass boost. And then I also I also raise the deep bass just a little bit. I think the default is like one dB. I think I turned it up maybe a quarter of a dB. And you could just adjust, you could adjust the tilt of the curves. And I find that very useful that you can do that. And then it shows you, um, in this case, I limited the correction to five kilohertz. 
because that's where if you look back at those measurements that I showed, it looks like um, that's where it was doing most of the correction anyway. It was showing you the full bandwidth, but it pretty much the before and after tracked. And I don't like doing full bandwidth all the way to 20K. It's just such a variable measurement when you're dealing with such high frequencies like that. It's very difficult for room correction systems to discern the differences between what the speaker is doing versus what the room is doing, especially at those higher frequencies. So I would tend to tell you to start with five kilohertz, but if you want to go to 20K, the great thing about Anthem Arc is once you run Arc Genesis, you can go and change those results and just re-import it back into the AVR and, and just figure out what sounds best to you at the end of the day. That's what really matters the most. So you can see it does all the different settings here. And the only thing that I, major thing that I changed other than increasing the room gain a little bit and increasing the, um, and basically taking the high pass filter off of the subwoofer, that was about it. I limited the correction, like I said, to five kilohertz because I have really heavy, reasonably heavy duty subs. I did not, I did not leave that high pass filter in because the subs have their own protection. So when you go to the high pass filter slope, it'll set it at a certain slope. I would just recommend switching that to flat, but it is pretty nice that you get, um, this kind of ability to make these adjustments. So what I want to do is I'm going to share my screen again, and I'm going to open up arc Genesis. I'm, you know what? I'm just going to go over this. Might as well give you guys the full, the 50 cent tour of this system. So I'm going to launch Arc. I'm actually going to open, open a saved Arc file. That's what I want to do. Like I said, I'm going to do a more detailed video when this is a final release software, the beta version. That's when we'll kind of do another video on this. And this just gives you a better picture of what's going on. Um, I just love the adjustability. It shows you all the different graphs of, you could see here this subwoofer problem I have. I have a big bump at around 25 Hertz and Arc did a great job of flattening that. And when you flatten the bass response in a room, that's when you can, you can add more room. You could have more room gain. You can get more bass going to the subwoofer and it doesn't sound boomy or annoying or anything like that. And Arc did a really impressive job with that. I like that it shows you a pictorial graph of where your speakers are laid out. Like I said, the levels seem pretty much spot on and just the targets is where, you know, you really want to play with the most. And like I said, you can add room gain if you want. It just basically, as you, as you add this, you see it raises that base level. I personally like the base level to be about 10 dB higher than the rest of the, than the high frequencies. It's a personal preference. Nobody is going to like flat response in a room. I'm telling you right now, flat response is great for a speaker in an anechoic chamber, but you need room gain and you need to have that elevated bass. Otherwise it's going to sound very thin and bright. And then here you see the deep bass boost. Be careful with that because you could really overload a subwoofer if you go crazy with that. And then, you know, just your different tilt frequencies and stuff like that. Um, the only thing that was a little bit ambiguous to me, and I'm not sure if it shows up in the screen or not. I think it showed up in the report where it said the uh, low frequency extension of the subwoofer. I set that to 130 Hertz. It was defaulted at 80 Hertz. And I asked Anthem about that because it doesn't show up in the on-screen display. Um, it's separate from the LFE crossover for what I'm seeing. Not 100% sure what that's doing, but that is something I'm going to pursue further uh, when I talk to Anthem. In fact, I'll just show you, just so you know what I'm talking about. It's this right here. It's the uh, subwoofer crossover frequency or low frequency extension, 130 hertz. That's not in the uh, on-screen display for um, the software here. Like if you go to subwoofer, settings it shows you the lfe low pass filter i don't think that's the same thing and i don't think it's the same thing as the front crossover because that was set at 130 hertz and then this one was showing <clears throat> excuse me this one was showing 80 hertz by default and i raised it so anyways i am very impressed with what i'm hearing unfortunately i can't show you that 
uh, all pass filter adjustment. It only shows you those results when you're running arc and I don't want to run arc while I'm doing a, a stream over here with you. But what, what it's basically doing is after it runs the regular correction, it asks you if you want to run the, uh, the phase correction and that's what's in the beta software and it'll run sweeps between the main speakers and the subwoofer. And as it's doing those sweeps, it'll cycle through different phase, um, degrees on the crossover and it'll just keep doing that and you'll see the graphical representation and then all of a sudden where there's a gap between the main speakers and the sub you see it's kind of filling in and you know that it found the right phase to blend properly let's face it that's one of the hardest things to do when you're setting up a subwoofer satellite system is to get the right transition between the subwoofer and the main speakers and that's what anthem arc genesis beta is doing and it's probably doing the best I've seen in any room correction system, and I've got them all. I've got Yamaha Y Power in one room. I've got um, D Rack in my theater room. I've got Odyssey X in my family room, and they all have their associated strengths or weaknesses. What I do like about the Anthem Arc Genesis is it's very user friendly. Um, it gives you incredibly good results right out of the gate. The only thing I did was I just raised the room gain a little bit and I maybe elevated the subwoofer a couple of dB, but it sounded incredibly well um, integrated and very cohesive without really doing much. And the thing is, it didn't kill the dynamics of the system. A lot of uh, room correction systems, when you turn them on full bandwidth, um, it sounds compressed to me. And I didn't hear that problem. I'm only, again, I'm only running it to 5K. I'm going to re do the filters and, and test it out to 20 K to see how I like it. But overall, anytime I turned it from arc Genesis on to off, I always preferred it on. Everything just sounded so much more seamless. The bass was more integrated. The bass wasn't boomy anymore because of that huge, it took care of that huge bump I had around 25 Hertz. It flattened that out. And, um, the great thing about it is with arc Genesis, you plug the microphone directly into your laptop. So you don't have to have the AVR in the same room as your display and speakers. And that's a very powerful tool. You could do it as long as your PC or your laptop is on the same network as your AVR, you could plug it in anywhere you want to do the correction. And that's awesome. So guys, I like what I'm seeing with Anthem Arc Genesis beta. Why don't you give me some comments down below? If you're an Anthem user, are you using that beta software? Have you had good results with it? Give me some comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Make sure you hit that like button. And don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to ask questions or suggest video topics. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.